Are you a YouTuber that doesn't know where to start when it comes to making a custom banner for your channel? Why is it important to have a banner? What are great examples of channel art? And how can you make one in Canva that elevates your YouTube channel? You are going to learn all of these answers and more. Channel art is the large banner that goes across the top of your channel page. You can use it to communicate with your potential audience, your channel's brand or personality. It's the first thing a visitor sees when they come to your channel, so it's important that it gives a clear impression about it. You can have a custom URL for your channel if you have over 100 subscribers. The other requirements for this are that you have been on the platform for 30 days, uploaded a profile picture, and channel art. We are going to take a look at three different channels to get an idea of what makes for a good banner. We're going to be inspired by one of them to create something similar yet different. First up is Nick Nemon's channel. His banner is very clear about what he does. It has a clear call to action. This banner has a quality image including his face. The other thing that you will notice is that on the computer, there is a slot to go to a website where you can find free music for content creators. I'll leave a link with information about Creator Mix in the description for you. I love that YouTube and Video Tips is very large. I love that there are shapes behind the words and they have shadows, which makes the shape pop off the page. I love that it is sized properly and I wouldn't change a thing. Second up is Footless Joe. She has selected a collection of portraits which demonstrate to her audience what her channel is about. The channel name Footless Joe with the phrase amputation and beyond makes it even more clear if the images didn't come across. She has her banner connected to various social media platforms. I love that it's sized pretty appropriately. You'll notice on the computer that there are pictures over there that won't show up on a phone, but that's okay. The one thing that I would change is add a shape with reduced transparency behind the words just to give it a little more visibility. The final channel to look at is the Fray Life. In this example, this family has a clear, high quality image taking up the full screen. They have their channel name along with the phrase everyday life with cystic fibrosis and then slightly under that is the phrase our journey of parenthood. This clearly shares what their channel is about and I just love it. I'll tell you what I would change about this banner a little later on but for now let's make our way to Canva so we can start designing. On the Canva homepage search for YouTube channel art. Open up a blank document. I've talked in the past about why templates don't always work well. I'm not going to digress into that today, but comment below if you want to know why they don't work well. The size for this document is 2560 by 1440 pixel, but not all of that will show up on a computer or phone. We need to set up this design so we know where our margins are for both devices. The easiest way I have found to do this is to create a rectangle for the mobile device size, which is 1546 by 423. You might find that you can't get the 423 or 1546 right on the dot, but as long as it's within a pixel, it should be fine. If you click on File, you can show rulers and guides. When you click on the top ruler, bring down a guide to the top of the rectangle and to the bottom of the rectangle. We'll do the same thing for the left side ruler. Then you can remove the rectangle. The inner middle part is what you see on phones and the middle larger rectangle is what you see on computers. What I like to do when designing a banner with a full photograph is to use my favorite Canva feature, a grid. I do this so I don't have to resize every photograph to fit inside the rectangle guides. This will make it faster for you so that you can spend more time on doing things that you love. 
One of the best practices when you are taking photographs for a banner is to leave enough edging so it doesn't fill up the full frame. I'm going to use this photograph in Canva's library and show you a trick that I use for framing it for the text. Edit image and I'm going to scroll down until I find one called photogenic. If photogenic's not there, it might be in a segment called you may also like. If I click see all, there are a whole bunch of filters that you can try. Ooh. Oh, I kind of like that one actually. Oh, yep. I'm saving paused means that it is thinking. Left click your image and put it inside of your grid. This is fine. Let me bring back up my guides so you can see the image actually shows up nicely within this, but I'm actually going to take this and slide it in because it's going to allow me to have more room on one of the sides for text. And actually this would be okay for text on both sides, but that's not the vision I have. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my guides again. And the shortcut for that is shift R, but always forget that. I just tend to go here. We're going to double click it and make it larger. You see there's white circles there that turn purple. I'm going to left click and drag it out some and then go on top, left click and bring it up and just size it where I think would be nice and then click done. And I've decided that I want my color to be purple because purple is the color for epilepsy awareness. Tap T on your keyboard for text. I want the channel name, which for this fake family is going to be the Shen family. I'm actually going to go ahead and make that uppercase and add an effect of lift. And I'm going to give it some intensity. And then I'm going to duplicate it because that makes my life easier. Align it properly and go living life with epilepsy. I know how to spell it, but my keyboard is not functioning right. And so I'm using a different keyboard until a new keyboard can come in for me. I selected those and grouped them. I'm going to size it to where I think it would go and then move it down here. Now, if I go back to the fray life, one of the things that I would change is that it is, is a little hard to see. So I would move it over here and put something underneath it just so that it's easier to read. That is the only thing that I would change. We could use a rectangle. I could click R on my keyboard and size a rectangle. And I can make it pretty much the same size here and get it aligned properly. Turn it purple or even leave it this color. But that's not what I'm going to do because I want to show you a little trick. We're going to just grab any of these purple colors because I'm actually going to change it. I'm going to size it first. We're going to size it first and then I'm going to bring it down because I need to do that. I need to select this and click lock so that this one won't take over the grid. I'm going to take this, go to edit image and then type in duotone and we're going to make it purple. We're going to select pop, but I'm going to click C control and I'm going to change it to this color so that it's got the purple in it. And I might even change this one. Let's see what white would look like. No, I'm just going to make it the so solid color. It's fine. Apply. Remember when you add an image effect, you have to wait for saving pause to finish. And then I'm going to click it, edit image, and we're going to click this one called shadows. If you don't see it, type in shadows at the top. And for this one, I'm going to use a page lift and click this. And I'm just going to increase the transparency to 62. Just increase the curve. There we go. Apply and right click, send it backwards. 
And there we go. We've got a nice shape with a shadow behind it. And I think this looks fantastic. If you want to give your audience that's on a computer a little something more, all you need to do is add a simple rectangle and we're gonna size it all the way across and then size it down. Maybe the same size as this and send it back. And Canva is just all about playing around with it. Let me use my keyboard. I can also add an L for a little line and we're gonna get that little line right there stretch this out duplicate it and bring it down and then what we can do is send it to the back right click send to back so this looks great we've got just a very very simple banner and it's time to download. Share, download, PNG, and there we go. Now we're in the back end. I'm on my computer. This is your studio. Go to customization, go to branding, and this is where you would change your profile picture, your banner image, even your video watermark. If you've never done it, it should say something like add, but mine says change because I've got one. So I'm going to click change and then I'm going to pull it from the location on my computer. You're going to notice that it looks really weird here in terms of what's viewable on desktop, but it's okay. It isn't going to show up like that really on desktop. The whole thing will show like was on the design, but this is the part that you can see on the computer and that looks really nice. That's supposedly what you can view on TV, but to be honest, I've never seen all the extra stuff. Click done and you will notice here that it has changed and you will see here that it shows it all the way across. I'm not going to click publish because that's not my channel banner, but if I were, I would just click publish. I'm going to click cancel. And I said that I was going to show you one more thing. If you go to basic info and scroll down here, this is where you can add links to sites that you want to share with your viewer. And I've got four links linked up on my page. Let me show you here. I've got the website, which is not very active. I need to, I need to switch that up, but I've got the Facebook group, the Instagram and the Facebook page links on banner indicate which links you would like to display on the banner of your channel homepage. I've chosen first five links. I think that's what's customary but you can change it to first link, first two links, etc. And you can move these around however you want. Think it's also in your about section. It is. So on your page in your abouts, here are all the links that you could go to. If you want to know more ways that you can use Canva for YouTube, then make sure you check out the video that's on your screen right now. 25 different ways that you can use Canva for YouTube. Oh, if you've seen that one already, then check the list in the description. I always leave links that I think that you would enjoy. If you like today's Canva tutorial and want to see more like it, make sure that you are subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye.